You can't get any closer to the Holy Spirit than you already are because he's inside of you. The only barrier between your closeness with him is number one, your revelation. Your revelation of where he is. But here's the good news. You're gonna learn not just the work of the Holy Spirit, but you're gonna learn the ways of the Holy Spirit. You're gonna learn how he operates, how he flows. You're gonna learn how to discern his voice this year. You're gonna learn how to hear his whispers and you're gonna learn how to feel his nudges when he doesn't say a word. So there's nine areas of the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna invite you into a season of study. Say a season of study. So I'm gonna teach you real quick, okay? You guys wanna learn something today? Yeah. I'm gonna teach you a little bit about the Holy Spirit. This whole year, you're gonna have me, you're gonna hear me talking about the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna teach about the Holy Spirit. This last year, the Lord wanted us to open the doors to heaven, right? Last year was a year where this became the open door portal of heaven. And we had heavenly encounters, ascensions, miracle signs, wonders, angelic visitations. But this year, we're gonna become the best friends of the Holy Spirit. And here's what that's gonna look like. It's gonna look like every day, you're gonna go on adventures with God. Say every day. Every day. Every day. You can't get any closer to the Holy Spirit than you already are, because he's inside of you. The only barrier between your closeness with him is number one, your revelation. Your revelation of where he is. Once you really believe, say really, because you can hear this, but how many of you know we don't feel it, all right? Like sometimes the Holy Spirit, you're in me, and then you, sometimes you don't feel nothing. Sometimes you feel like he's like 30 miles away. Anybody ever pray and feel like you can feel within your spirit, like, man, God, you're like 50,000 miles away. Like, I don't think you're even close to me. It, that feeling is not the truth, amen? So it all starts with the revelation of the truth that even, even, I'm gonna tell you straight up, even when you fall, Holy Spirit is still inside of you. He didn't depart from you. You grieved him, but he didn't leave you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Because he promised us, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. He will not depart from you. Don't let any liar, any teaching tell you, legalistic teaching tell you that the Holy Spirit will leave you just because you made a mistake. Amen? And there's no way that you can feel convicted and afraid of losing the Holy Spirit and say, I've blasphemed the Holy Spirit. If you're concerned about blaspheming the Holy Spirit, it's very likely you have not blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Okay? Because there's also this uh, religious attack that comes on the mind where people are panicking that they've blasphemed the Holy Spirit. If you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you would not care. You would be given over to a reprobate mind amen praise the lord so no sin can be forgiven except the blasphemy of the holy spirit and if you blaspheme the holy spirit you most likely would not even know that you did nor would you care that you did is that fair enough the pharisees blasphemed them and they didn't care but here's the good news you're going to learn not just the work of the holy spirit but you're going to learn the ways of the holy spirit you're going to learn how he operates how he flows amen you're going to learn how to discern his voice this year. You're going to learn how to hear his whispers. And you're going to learn how to feel his nudges when he doesn't say a word. Amen? So there's nine areas of the Holy Spirit that I'm going to invite you into a season of study. Say a season of study. Season of study. So let me make this clear. You can learn about the Holy Spirit and still not have a relationship with him. So you can study the Holy Spirit as much as you want, but if you don't talk to him and spend time with him, you won't really know him. But it's important to still learn about somebody. Like it's important to still study who this person is. You know, the Holy Spirit is a person. Jesus is a person. Did you know that the Holy Spirit has different attributes and character traits and a different personality from Jesus? Very similar but different. So then the question is, is like, well, hold on. Who is the Holy Spirit then? What is he like? Amen. So number one out of the nine, you're going to discover the person of the Holy Spirit. So the first thing you need to learn is the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
That's number one. Number two, you want to learn the nature of the Holy Spirit. I encourage everyone to write this down. Write it down in your notes. I'm giving you nine areas of study so that when you go to spend time with the Lord, you can start studying this. Number three, the power of the Holy Spirit. And number four, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number five, the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Number six, the language of the Holy Spirit. Number seven, the voice of the Holy Spirit. Number eight, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And number nine, the friendship of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So these are nine areas of study that I invite you to in the next few months. Amen? So I want you guys to spend some time learning these different nine categories. And I encourage you, let me just encourage you how to do it, because I want you guys to be very practical people. Amen? You know, one of the things is, every single one of you, I want you to never limit yourself to knowing less because you're not in the position of a teacher. Does that make sense? I want you to position yourself as if you had to teach these nine subjects of the person of the, of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So this is, you're in the school of the Holy Spirit, specifically learning the person of the Spirit and how he functions, amen? And then I wanna throw a number 10 in there, and I want you to put the operations of the Holy Spirit throughout history. The operations of the Holy Spirit throughout history, it's number 10. There's so much more, honestly, on the Holy Spirit because he's infinite, but I want you to practice these, ten, study these 10 categories. When you study the operations of the Spirit throughout history, you'll find certain things in, about the Holy Spirit that you probably didn't know were possible. Amen? There was actually uh, some controversy on a post I had made a while back about, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna just stir something up right now, okay? Uh, there was some controversy on a post because there was an image about a preacher who while he was preaching, he was levitating. Now some people said that he was jumping, whatever, okay. I'll dismiss that as he was jumping in that particular image. However, there have been multiple instances in church history where certain people who were so caught up by the Spirit that they bodily would be levitating while they preached. Uh, see, I don't know. Some people are like, I don't know about that. <laughs> the word levitation is just a word. Another term for it is bodily ascending or floating. Now, did Jesus bodily ascend? Was he not bodily taken up, levitated into heaven, if you will? So there was a lot of controversy about that because people were like, I don't know if that's in the Bible. Clearly it's in the Bible. I mean, it happened with Jesus, right? And he said greater works, right? Well, the Holy Spirit can do the same operation. So there's also controversy about holy laughter, right? Any of you guys get heat about holy laughter? Somebody tell you that's demonic, whatever, right? I mean, that's a simple debunk, right? Like, does God laugh? The answer is yes. And would it be too crazy that God would make you laugh, right? So it's like a silly argument, right? But notice how the church struggles so much with understanding the operations of the Holy Spirit. And that word operations can be interchanged with the term, the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. So you can put operations slash manifestations. Man, if you learn the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, your faith to flow with Him will change. When you walk closely with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will shock and surprise you with how he flows. And I wanna give you this. The Holy Spirit shows up to do one thing, and it's to bring glory to Jesus. The Holy Spirit shows up to glorify Jesus, not to glorify us. Amen? When your motive changes to self-glorification, the Holy Spirit will 
withdraw his glory. But if your motive is to glorify Jesus, he will always show up to do just that. Amen? So when you're in fellowship with him, realize that the Holy Spirit always points you to Jesus. And I remember the first time I established a relationship with the Holy Spirit, um, it was the first time I heard about a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because I, I, I knew about like the Father and the Son and talking to Jesus and the Father in Jesus' name. And I was still like a new believer. And then I remember I sat down through a teaching and he talked about communing with the Holy Spirit. And I said, what is that? You know, like, what do you mean by that? And he talked about having a conversation with the Holy Spirit. And he, then I, I remember I was just sitting there the whole night and I was just in awe by what his, he was saying. It was such a simple teaching. And I went to my, to my I was uh, actually visiting the International House of Prayer in Kansas City, which are in Outwater right now. But I remember I was there when it, things were good. And I went to, uh, I was staying at somebody's house and I went to the bedroom. I couldn't wait to get to the bedroom, right? I couldn't wait to get to the house. <laughs> to just talk to the Holy Spirit. I was like, I want to try this. I want to. And then uh, I remember I was so awkward. It was the weirdest thing. I mean, this is normal for you guys now, but it was awkward for me then. It was a new thing. And I was like, um, okay, all right. I'm going to try to talk to him today. I've talked to Jesus. I've talked to the Father, but I never talked to the Holy Spirit. And then I was like, uh, Holy Spirit? And it was so fast. He spoke so quick and he said, he almost said in a joking tone, he's like, because it was so awkward, he was like, I know, I know, I don't get as much attention, do I, right? So he was trying to say it like, I know it's weird. You know what I mean? Like he, but then like, and at first the way he said it was, it was hilarious. I know that doesn't sound funny, but it was funny to me in the moment because I felt so awkward and he broke the awkwardness. And then I realized, I was like, oh man, you're right. You don't get as much attention. And you know, here in this ministry, we, we, he does. But around a lot of the church, the body of Christ at large, the Holy Spirit doesn't get a lot of attention, like at all. And I remember when he said that to me, I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And he said to me, he's like, it's part of my ministry to not draw attention to myself. He said, my ministry is to point you to the Son and the Son to the Father and the Father to the Son. And the son told you that I would come. And I said, oh, that is so good. And I had like an hour and a half conversation with the Holy Spirit, just back and forth, relationship. And I, man, I went to bed like a little baby. I was cuddling with the Holy Spirit. And my, ever since that day, my relationship with the Holy Spirit has never been the same. Amen. Amen. So this is my invitation to you. Develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen.